this is the first step I think everybody should think about when he wants to go into, in, into, this, uh, into this area. When you want to do the next step, so this really big step to go from the B2C world into B2B world, so in the business to business world, then you have to be prepared really, really good. You seriously have to prepare yourself because this is like you're entering an adult universe. All the things you know will change. How you sell, how you talk to people, how you present, how you do marketing, how you have to plan your day, how you have to work, how you have to present yourself, how you, how you have to appear as, an, as, a, as a brand or as a person on the marketplace. So you have, to be prepared. you have to be prepared. So my suggestion is, uh, honestly, I didn't do this. I learned everything the hard way. I didn't uh, work in a company um, which is doing projects like this already. So I really, really had to develop everything from scratch. But I would not suggest this because this is the hardest way you can imagine. The hardest way. Yeah, and you need so much money. It's so frustrating. You need so much time, it's so slow, it is successful, but it needs time and you have to get over it. So I would suggest search for a company who is already doing what you want to do in the future, work together with them, work for them, get employed for example, or partner with them. Yeah, at least partner with them and work as an independent contractor with them and learn. That's the first thing. The second thing is, Search for a mentor who already did what you are doing or what you want to do. This is the second thing. And then the third thing, you have to have a very, very good team around you because when you go into a company with 1,500 employees and you say, hey, yeah, I'm trainer XYZ. Hey, here is little Stefan. I'm a one-man show and I'm going to do a big project in your company you are out of this company as fast as you can think. Because companies contract companies. Companies do not contract one-man shows. So you have to show there is a team around you, there is a structure around you, there is leadership in your company, there is a brand, and there is something seriously behind you. Otherwise, you have no chance to be successful in the B2B world. Wow. Okay. So that's a lot to, to incorporate. Yeah. That's <laughs> right. <laughs> Sorry for this long story, but that's my story and my experience. <laughs> yeah, I love to listen to it. I'm sure my listeners would, be lo would love to listen to it as well. Uh, so you're talking about business contract businesses. Um, how do you, like what happens, how do you deal with um, like rejections and, and yeah, how do you deal with rejections? Yeah, um, dealing with, with rejections was one of the hardest things to learn for me, honestly. It was one of the hardest things because um, as long as I took it personally, I had a problem. And so, in my opinion, when you are in sales and when you deal with rejections, especially in these huge projects and in these huge amounts of money a contract uh, means, you are not allowed to take it personally. You have to think about it. Okay, that's a numbers game. I have to figure out what are my numbers, how many people I have to call to get an appointment, how many appointments I have to make to get to, to, to send out a proposal, how many proposals I have to give to get a deal, and all this stuff. And when you know these numbers, you can put all the frustration out of the equation because you know exactly, okay, I need so many telephone calls, I need so many contacts, I need so many appointments, I need so many presentations to get so many deals at the end of the day. And then you also know exactly, okay, when I don't get this contract or when they don't sign up, it's no problem because I need, for example, 20 people or 20 companies who say, no, thank you. We are not doing anything with you to get the next customer. 
So you, um, do you, like, well, you make calls, but I'm, I'm, my question is, um, do you have like a team of people that, that just do the sales, selling and the closing and everything? In the meantime, I have already people in my team, but this is one of the main focuses in my company right now that I'm expanding my sales team, especially in the North American market, um, because I'm still doing a lot of sales on my own here. And uh, this is one of the main focuses to, to add more people to my sales team and to build a really big sales team. Um, yeah. That's amazing. Um, what else? Thank you. <laughs> okay. From what's what's probably what what's probably interesting from my experience is um, a lot of when when I talk to companies or when I talk to uh, company owners or CEOs or decision makers, one of the most ans uh, asked question is okay, why should we do this? Why should we in invest in the health of our employees? Yeah, and it's. A very interesting question and there is so much old thinking and old mindset behind this question because there are still so many companies who are thinking, hey, we employ them, they have to work for us and then they have to shut up. And when they are not working like we expected, we kick them out and we get somebody new. But yes, of course, this was the old way to think, and this was the old way how a lot of companies um, was dealing with this situation. But um, in the meantime, we have so many people who are employed. We have a very low rate of unemployment, and especially highly educated and highly experienced people, most, in most situations, the baby boomers, are in a company, and they are working in a company. So when you lose a person like this, it's extremely expensive to find a new person. And most likely you, are, will, you will not be able to find a person with the same skill set, with the same experience, and for the same amount of money you have to pay them. So this is one of the main things um, why you should invest in the health of your people. The other thing is a lot of companies just think about sick time. But yes, of, of course, when your people are not so sick or, or, or not so often uh, ill, then you reduce a little bit of your costs. But much more important, when your people are sick, they cannot be productive in your company because they are not there. And when you have to execute a project and your people are not there, and you have a deadline behind this project, you have to find other employees to execute this project. So there is one of the big ROIs, yeah? When somebody is not in the company, okay, that's not a problem, but somebody else has to do this work and you have to pay these people to do this work and then they have to do more hours and more hours and then it gets really expensive. The next thing is, for example, um, one of the biggest issues today is engagement in companies. Over 70% of the employees are disengaged. Can you imagine this? Over 70% are disengaged. And we know a disengaged, a disengaged person is not focused. They produce a lot of failure. They are not productive. And they are not executing a lot of the stuff they could execute. So when you invest in the health of your employees and in the health of your company, you can increase engagement. And when the engagement increases, you have a completely different company culture and your people suddenly are motivated, are productive, getting so much done in a very short amount of time. And this is the major ROI. And when you calculate all these small steps I talked about, you have a corporate uh, a, a ROI from one to 30 when you do a professional corporate health management system in your company. So you invest a thousand and you, sp and you earn 30,000 or you invest a hundred thousand and you save millions of dollars. 
that's really important to save money, especially for companies like that. If they can save, then they're willing to give it a try. Exactly. Um, yeah. So the, the employees, the, the people that, that you work with, um, do they, you mentioned the, the five pillars. So how they do that is uh, not only they have to work on it at work, but they also have to do stuff outside of work to, to improve overall, like, like everything for the workplace. Yes, so um, we target both things, exactly. So we are focusing in one area, we are focusing on the conditions and the, uh, on the working environment to improve the working environment, but we also focus on the responsibility for every single employee. And what we are doing is we are working with very simple, very small health-related tips for the employees. So, um, for example, when we do a one-on-one -on -one meeting with uh, every employee, they get a health passport, they get a body composition monitoring where we show them nine different numbers um, concerning their health, where they see exactly what is their actual situation and where they should improve their health. And then they get two to three very specific personalized tips what they can improve or implement the next few weeks. And then we support them in their private life, if they like, yeah, we support them in their private life to implement these health topics. And it can be as easy like, okay, drink more water or not so much coffee or start with a healthy breakfast. And okay, which kind of food you can start in, uh, in the morning whistle. So we are working with really very small, very simple tips. And this is the uh, way why we are very successful with this because people can do it. And it's not hard to do it. And it's not a major big change in their life. So what's the commitment at work and outside work, the time frame? Like, uh, for example, extra 10, 15, 30 minutes at work and extra how many minutes at home to, to do this? Yeah, um, the time commitment, there is no extra time commitment. And this is the interesting thing because people are eating every single day. People are moving every single day. People are drinking liquids every single day. So what we are focusing on is changing the things they are already doing in their life. And there is no additional time commitment for this. When it comes to exercise, okay, there is an additional time commitment. But for example, we search for things we, they can reduce in their life, which has no impact in their health or in their life. In a lot of situations, it's, it's media, because a lot of people are just on social media wasting their time um, or just watching movies or TV and stuff like that and wasting their time. Because, for example, this is a, uh, an example from my home country, from Austria. On average, an Austrian citizen is between four to six hours per day in front of the TV. Four to six hours a day, can you imagine? So, and the same person is complaining that this person has no time for health and for his friends and for his family and for hobbies and stuff like that. So. What we are doing is we say, hey, look, no problem. Stay five hours in front of the TV instead of six hours. And then you have one hour for your health and for your family or going out, doing a little bit exercising, meditation, breathing, exercising, yoga, for example. A lot of great things you can do. A little change, one hour of sacrifice of the things you like to do that are not relevant is going to make a big difference. On, on Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. And um, we don't even start with one hour. We start, we start with 10 minutes or with 20 minutes per day. Yeah. Because my experience is one hour is already a huge change for most of the people. <laughs> yeah, 10, yeah. Minutes, 10 minutes, they can do it. <laughs> so what are some of your um, recommendations, personal development, like uh, books or, um, yeah, things to to follow yeah so um, I I'll, depending on the situation where you are when you when you just starting out with this uh, with, with personal development yeah 
Um, I would recommend, for example, uh, Playing the Matrix from Mike Dooley. This is a book, yeah. And uh, actually, I wrote this book a few weeks ago, um, and it's a really, really great approach how you can deal with mindset, goal setting, um, imagination, uh, visionary stuff, um, and, and, and stuff like that. Um, you definitely should find a mentor, depending on the area where you want to improve. Yeah? When you want to start with stress reduction, then search for an expert who is specialized on reducing stress. Yeah. So search, search for, first thing is think about what you really want to improve. Because when you go into this topic and when you say, okay, I just want to do personal development at all, you will have no clue where to start. Yeah. Think about what area of your life you want to improve. And then you start in this area. For example, I'm working with a life wheel. And this life wheel has eight different areas where I can focus on. One of these areas is my personality. One is health. One is my relationships. One is my social life. One is my son. One is financial. One is education. Yeah. Um, and so I think about, okay, in which area I want to focus the next quarter, for example. And then I search for specific books or for specific mentors or spe for specific resources to improve there. Okay, so it's very personalized. That makes sense. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. Great. Um, you, what's your website and your book? Yeah. yeah. My, my website is um, corporate-health-consulting.com. So it's corporate-health-consulting.com. Okay. You post find me on LinkedIn. This is the best resource to reach out to me. You find me with my name, or you can also type in CHC Corporate Health Consulting. That's our company, and I will I, I, I will be glad to reach out to you. <laughs> okay, great. So what I'm going to do is have all the have everything that you mentioned. In, well, I mean, not everything, yeah. but it's going to no, no, definitely. It. And, and yeah, have all the links up for everybody to see. And then if anybody, you know, needs any work, you know, want to work with you, they can reach out to you. Definitely. This would be great. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much for being on. Really appreciate it. Thank you, Pan. It was a great interview. Thank you for taking the time and interviewing me. It's really no great problem. to be on your show. No <laughs> Thank you very much. Have a good day. Have a great day. <laughs>